officer and the director of the American Center here in Calcutta. Let me give everyone a warm welcome to the round table on women, peace, and security. So I uh, want to first uh, acknowledge a couple of special guests we have today. Uh, we have George Sibley, Minister Counselor. EEST. EEST. Thank you. Thank you. It took me a long time to say it that fast. Uh, <laughs> What's brought us together is a very important topic, topic uh, countering violent extremism and looking at ways that women are affected and ways that women in particular uh, can play a role in overcoming the problem of countering um, violent extremism. Um, all right, um, so um, Namaste Calcutta, uh, Salaam Alaikum Calcutta. Um, we're very pleased um, to be joining you from Karachi, Pakistan. And thank you very much, Council General Hall, for your remarks and setting the scene for today's roundtable on women, security, and peace. Um, today, I'd like to introduce our two panelists um, from Pakistan. Um, this is um, Cindy, Sindhu Baloch, and this is Seth Samejo. Um, Karachi, um, Assistant Cultural Affairs Officer, Griffin Rosell, and our Senior uh, Cultural Affairs Specialist, um, Sara Alam and our exchanges assistant, um, Zara um, Hijani, um, who are also very helpful in helping to bring together this program. Uh, I choose uh, in education because I saw in surrounding in my community that the girls were totally ignored. Even uh, they are not involved in decision making and even uh, they ignore every aspect of life. So I decided I will work on uh, education for girls. Um, I myself live in Jamshara, which is 200, uh, 150 kilometers away from Karachi. It's a um, kind of city, which is um, it's a small maybe city where we have and, and surrounded by villages. Um, what, what, what's so interesting is that in our ashram, when we started promoting musicians, we bring musicians from different parts of Pakistan especially the villages, and more were women actually. Like recently a woman, um, her name is Mai Rai. She's very popular in Coke Studio too. So when we brought her to Ashram some three, four years ago, um, she starts singing. We invited the media. What we do with our Ashram, we celebrate, you know, twice a month, thrice a month, some evenings, some weekends, you know. We invite friends, we invite youngsters from universities, we invite teachers, we invite poets, we invite musicians. We say, let's connect all these, uh, you know, different generations. So let me introduce the Jani Haldar. She is a Radha Krishna Fellow who's teaching at the Calcutta University Women's Studies Department. And she was also the ICSSR Fellow at JNU. And uh, she loves watching films and singing. Thank you. Let's meet uh, Ms. Anuradha Kapoor. And she is the founder, director of the SIAMS and is a 20 years uh, old organization which uh, really uh, works on the women issues. And she is also a dancer. And I am not a dancer. <laughs> I enjoy it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for everyone. Uh, and I'm Anunna and director at Bangla a social enterprise working for development, equitable development using culture as a tool. And I'll be talking to you and writing to you as thanks to all of you to be here, coming here. Now we'll start our first panel. Conflicts between the state and non state. We have a uh, uh, ethnic uh, group conflict. We have conflict within the conflict, uh, ethnic group, different kinds of conflict. I think Manipur is one of the most uh, states in India in terms of conflict. Even though India does not recognize it, we have conflict. <laughs> and even the uh, panchayat level, all the councillors and all, even councillors, they don't even involve in decision making process. This is the problem where women are facing in Manipur. And some of the factors are from my last more than one decade experience, some of the factors encouraging violent extremism in Manipur is due to the failure of non supportive system, institutions, policies, cultural beliefs, and the violence against women is, cultural beliefs is one where violence against women is happening. 
And, and another, another uh, factor is militaristic like armed forces special power act and patriarchal solutions to armed conflict. Uh, we know that you know the woman, the you know the nurturer, the mother, often has a very distinct role to play because, uh, and that's exactly where uh, there are certain policies taken in particular in India and I'm also in West Bengal, uh, which are you know related to education and especially the girl-child education. Kona Street is one such uh, particularly extremely positive. But as I said, I'll just very refer uh, quickly refer to my you know field trips that I do very often on the borders. Uh, I see. In my last 20 years that I've been visiting the places, there has been a serious amount of um, uh, conservatism, traditionalism coming back to the societies, mm -hmm. which is unthinkable actually. In the urban uh, you know, city, that's all we are, we working women uh, do everything at par with everybody else and I'm extremely, uh, I think all of us have our own, you know, stand our own two feet without the support of the male. But the in the state of Jharkhand, the extremism is equal to Naxalism. Women are also seen in the Naxalism, women especially the young girls between 15 to 25 years of age. Why they take up arms are due to the following reasons. Terrain, the geographical <coughs> distance, that is very hard. They, they come from remote villages. So this is the sort of range of stuff we do and we will be focusing on our efforts through the radio and a program called Mother's Schools and Mother's Support Groups. Uh, and so obviously you, everybody knows this in this room, it's why I focus on women. Women are play a prominent role within families and if given the ability to speak, they can shift from being victims in the way that we've been discussing them to be actually at the front line of the resilience as well. And women need to be recognized as partners in the prevention of violence, extremism. Or not, not violence. I mean, not, what is extremism? What is terrorism? What is insurgency? You know, these are words used very conveniently in some places. So, for example, when it comes to Islamic situations, we call it Islamist or Islamic terrorism. When it comes to, uh, you know, for example, in Nagaland, we, 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 we don't call it Christian terrorism. You know, that was the first Christian terrorist uh, organization. I mean, right on, on, even on the letterhead of the NSCNIM, you have written Nagaland for Christ. You know, they've been fighting. So, I think these, that's important when we, when we talk about these things. The second thing is that I think we need to flag is that there's been zero documentation about the uh, problem of women. Uh, peace, security, etc. Again, in context of violence. So, communalism is an extremely complex phenomenon in Indian politics, and the waves of communal carnages have come with all different forces, did and has been carried over in its wake. Moral beliefs between two communities are thrown aside, and humanity is in strain. In the post independence period, one of the biggest challenges has, uh, faced by Indian women is combating against communal violence which is activated by the religious fundamentalism. It should be said again that when we are talking about women and violent extremism, again, uh, I take that point that, you know, I also have this intention about how the semantics of the word violent extremism, but we also have to keep in mind that women is not a homogeneous category. There has to be a contextualization, not only regionally, but also what are the kind of women we are talking about, whether we are talking about women as uh, extremists themselves and, what, uh, and why the reasons why they are uh, you know, appropriated, uh, how women are affected by incidences of violent extremism, women as uh, victims because they are mothers, daughters, wives, sisters of men who are violent extremists, and women of course as peace builders and peacemakers. I think we need to contextualize it when we work as a network to ensure that extremism in all their forms, in all the different areas, are uh, adequately addressed. So, when we look at uh, preventing and countering uh, violent extremism, it's also essential to see that there are works that we have already been doing, and we need to build on those work. Starting a new network, does it, is it really going to help, or do we build on existing ones? Work that has been done on gender-based violence, do we, you know, put more effort into that, into addressing extremism? In what way? How do we do it? Work such as mediation work that we've been doing in Nepal for the last 10 years and which, which has been showing a lot of success. But because of Robindranath's huge influence, 
with whom became the focus. Now, why I am talking about this? Now, in Baul of Bilbhum, the educated circuit of Calcutta, India, we all appreciate the music. Have you heard of any female Baul? No. We always used to refer them as Khib. Not even their name. Now, to me, that is violent extremism cause. How come a female Baul is never being referred by her name? And the educated circuit we always were happy mentioning about him. That was the situation till 2004. Then came our small interaction, intervention work. 2015, as we stand today, what do you call the female Baus in Nadia? We worked only in Nadia. Baulani. Name and Baulani. Now here comes respect. Here comes identity. Culture helps people to get that identity. Uh, actually, uh, I was in the IULP uh, this year, uh, June, and Edwin was talking about violent extremism. So while I was listening to them, all of them were talking about the IC, the Boko Haram and all. And I was wondering why they are not talking about the religious extremism going on in Bangladesh. Because we don't have ISIS and Boko Haram, but we do have our uh, the so-called fundamentalist Islamic extremists and uh, uh, the people who preach Islam in a wrong way, they misinterpret Islam and they also preach hate speech in, in probably, uh, uh, especially in Juma time. Something that we need to work with. Violence itself is something that we have to prevent. So, so that, um, to add one more. Yeah. 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 Y